Hi everybody, thank you so much for coming to my online studio. My name is Bethany Field and I'm so glad you are here. Today we're going to be working on the gesture of trees from the background to the foreground. I love to collect samples of paper and keep all of them in a clear plastic folder actually underneath some books on my bookshelf so I can keep them nice and flat. I have all different grades, all different brands, and all different sizes, and I love to pull them out when I am experimenting with a technique or wanting to try a new color palette. I am using some 600 grit um, scrap paper. The link to this product is in the description below or on my blog, and I love to start my landscapes with this beautiful dark blue hard pastel. I am pinching it between my forefinger and my thumb and that's how I generally hold um, pastels as I'm painting. And not using the point but using the side, I'm moving my pastel in an up and down fashion and kind of swirling it side to side to make my tree. You can, um, you know, I don't tend to use the point of the pastel at this at this part of the painting I like to use the side and you can see here that I'm using it in a horizontal fashion to indicate the ground. I like to use the pastels in the direction of whatever I'm painting so in this case I'm painting another little tree slash bush in the background and I'm going up I'm using an up and down motion and then whenever I am painting the ground I tend to go side to side. This is a rule that is made to be broken but this is something I generally use at the beginning of the painting and underpaint. Right now I'm using the foam pipe insulation that I love to use. I get it at my local hardware store. It creates a really soft effect, perfect for things off in the distance. And then on this foreground tree, I'm going to be using rubbing alcohol, also called surgical spirits in some parts of the world. The surgical spirits and rubbing alcohol creates um, kind of actually a paint that uh, since pastel is dry pigment any wet media that you add to it you're actually creating paint but it also creates really dark edges and crisper lines that I like to use for my foreground uh, elements once again I went up and down and kind of swirled around for the upright elements and then side to side more for the ground elements you can see that the rubbing alcohol is a little wet and we're going to wait for it to dry. It dries very quickly and doesn't take the tooth off of this paper that I'm using. It only takes a moment for the rubbing alcohol to dry on the paper. Less of it comes off versus the side where you used foam pipe insulation, just as a side note. This is the palette we'll be using for this very simple landscape scene. I don't have a reference photo to show you. I love to intuitively create little scenes like this just based on um, my intuition and um, whatever I want it to be, which is what, what makes art fun. I, I love to start off um, just kind of mirroring and mimicking the, um, under, the underpainting with tones and values that are similar and so I'm still using this these blue colors these are much much softer pastels I'm going to pick up some very warm mid value green and using the side once again and just gripping that pastel with my thumb and forefinger I'm going to be scumbling in that warm green over the the blue that I used earlier now this is the advantage of very soft pastels is that they layer easily and also using the sanded paper. This can be more difficult if you're using paper that doesn't have the grit added. I, you'll notice that these colors are very saturated and when you are working on something that is you know, in the foreground or things that are closest to you, colors will be richer than things off in the distance. Using those little tips like the, um, you know, the foam pipe insulation to make a hazier background using more gray tones is a great tool to keep in your pocket for when you want to create more atmospheric perspective. I'm using much more desaturated tones for that distant shrub. I want to I want to highlight the tree in the front while also having elements in the background. 
This is the Sky palette that I've chosen. Um, it's a very light range of very light lavenders and very light cobalt blues. I love to start carving in the tree against the sky and that's really like how I like to think about it. When I first began painting it was so difficult to to create sky holes, what we call sky holes. They always look like little ornaments hanging on my tree and I've learned so much about how to do that. I tend to limit how many sky holes I put in the middle of a tree and I love to use the palette knife technique to scratch in texture on the sky holes. If you want more information about that, you can watch the video that I um, created about the palette knife. I'm continuing to work my way up in value. I'm using um, a very light cobalt, also a very light purple, and right there I'm cleaning my pastel off on the side of my hand. I didn't have a paper towel nearby, and that's a great way just to make sure that the marks that you're making are nice and pure. I don't want any smudges or, or browns um, in the sky on this painting. I'm being very careful here to just swipe these colors in. This sanded paper makes it so easy. I'm gonna tap off the excess residue since I'm working flat today. Now I'm adding some very small details to this foreground tree. And this is where you'll begin to notice that I'm using a little smaller marks. I'm using the corners and the sides of the pastel to um, indicate tiny little leaves, but also grasses, things like that. This is the point of a painting where I am going to slow way down as far as um, what exactly I'm doing. I'm thinking a, a lot about the color temperature of the pastels that I'm choosing and also um, stepping back and almost squinting my eyes to see if my values are reading true, if my shapes are, are reading, if the composition is pleasing. Now this is a, just a very simple little sketch for you here on YouTube. And oftentimes when I'm doing a studio painting, I would have done a thumbnail beforehand and um, sketched it out probably maybe on my paper a little bit more than I did today. But I wanted to get you something out so you could see and hear me since I have my new microphone. I hope it sounds great. <laughs> Now what I'm going to do is just show you how I sketch in trunks and branches sometimes. I like to use these pastel pencils. I hold it actually at the bottom, like um, not how you traditionally hold a pencil to write or do arithmetic. I'm gently swiping it up and when you hold it very loosely like that, it almost becomes like you're holding a paintbrush things. Um, it is a little bit more random than painstakingly trying to draw in a branch. You'll notice when you go um, and observe or do any kind of plein air um, sketching or making notes that we tend to think in our child's mind that tree trunks are always brown, but you'll find when you really observe that they tend to be much lighter and grayer. And that's why I love to use more gray, light gray and mid, mid value gray pencils for my tree trunks. I picked up the foam pipe insulation to swipe in, especially the edges of the painting to blend the pastel a little bit more into the tooth. I wanna create a soft edge on um, around the four sides of the painting. This helps lead the eye into the center of the painting, which is where I want my viewers to look. There's that famous palette knife. Everybody, everybody always asks me about the palette knife. And you can see that I'm scratching just a little bit on some of the sky holes that I, I created. I tapped in with that light, that light color that helps create tiny little branches and blends it a little bit more to where it looks a little more realistic instead of glaring at us that um, 
that's you know a sky hole refining the the meadow I'm going to leave the blue pastel um, underpainting that I swiped in with the rubbing alcohol I love that color it creates a very nice shadow and just some some in areas of interest in this painting this is a very light gray hard pastel and this is another technique to add trunks and tree branches these are squared off hard pastels and when you use the edge of the um, side and and gently just make a, a, a light mark you can indicate branches and trunks and there you have the finished painting this is a small works piece typical of a size that I would complete in one of my daily painting sessions it's very doable as you can see this is a real-time YouTube video and without counting the alcohol dry time it's under 12 minutes this is wonderful for me as a busy mom of three and having lots of laundry to do as well. I can um, get a painting under my belt while I'm learning and using new techniques every day. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I put out frequent videos, time lapses, and tutorials.